everyone and thank you for joining us for our virtual exhibitor, exhibitor enhancement day for speciality and fine food fair 2022. I'm Nicola Woods and I'm the event manager for the fair. The purpose of today is to give you as many tips and tricks to help you get prepared as possible for the event in September. We'll begin with some of the practical operational tips, then on to marketing with some top tips from Vari from the food marketing experts. And Vari will also share information on creating Nature's Corridors, one of our charity partners. Our very own Maddie and Nicola will then let you know about our e-zone and PR tips, and we'll then get some valuable insight from Marcus Carter, an experienced exhibitor and buyer, who will then be followed by Adrian Boswell from Selfridges. And finally, we'll hear from our charity partner, City Harvest. Please do ask any questions as we go along. You can pop them into the chat function and we'll ask after each speaker. So let's get going. Firstly, I'd like to introduce you to Emma Pellman, Head of Operations. Over to you, Emma. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning. My name is Emma Pellman and I look after the operations uh, for Speciality and Fine Food Fair alongside my colleagues Louisa and Bethany, who um, are in the audience today. Um, so firstly, I want to explain the role of the operations team and how we are here to help you. Um, we are responsible for organising the build of the show, ensuring it is um, on time and runs smoothly and making sure everyone is working safely. One of the main roles um, is to ensure your experience is as smooth as possible. So we are your first point of contact for queries regarding the logistics or practicalities of your stand. This uh, would include stand building queries, um, food safety, traffic, venue queries, etc. So if you uh, have any questions, um, we are here to help. Um, Maddie will be covering the Exhibitor Hub, um, but I will be running through the Operations Zone, which forms part of the Exhibitor Hub. Um, and the Operations Zone is the one-stop shop for all of your operational um, information you may need to prepare for the show. Um, so when you log into the Exhibit Hub, uh, you can click on the Operations Zone, which is circled on the slide. Um, and then it will take you to a screen uh, the screenshot on the right, um, which is each heading gives you the information regarding the show. So please spend some time looking over each one of um, these and you'll find most of the answers that you are looking for here. Um, so to take a look at these, so you've got your timetable, um, so when you can access the halls um, and, and leave, when you have to leave, the health and safety information, your food safety, obviously we're encouraging everyone to sample where possible, um, so we do need to consider the food safety element and sustainability. So here um, we have uh, come up with some, a few ideas of how you can reduce, reuse and recycle uh, for the show. Um, the team contacts, um, you'll find all of our contact details um, with a brief uh, explanation of what we do and so you know who to contact for what. Also, um, there are our Calendly links. So for operations, um, if you want to book a customer care call with us, um, you can see our calendar and, and pick a time that works for you to run through any of those queries you have. Um, you'll also see the compulsory forms and optional forms headings and you have an arrow here um, and this is where it will drop down to the full list of forms for you. Um, deadlines for these compulsory and optional forms are shown um, and you can click on the order forms and uh, complete as you need to. Um, do please make sure that you note the uh, deadlines though because obviously these, if you make sure that you hit those deadlines then there's no risk of being out of stock or um, missing out on the early bird rates. We've also got the official suppliers and useful contacts um, uh, page, um, which is a helpful page um, to see all of our appointed suppliers who we regularly use and trust. And um, this list contains pretty much all of the services you could possibly need. Um, but please note that we have changed our core contractor for 2022. So um, the contractor that is building the shell scheme and providing the electrics and carpet um, is no longer GES. Um, and we now have appointed Showlight, who we've used many times and feel very confident they will provide us with a fantastic service. Um, it's, impo it's important to note this though because the shell scheme um, will have changed because of this so please do make sure you take a look at the shell scheme specification if you are a shell scheme exhibitor um, 
and this would affect your graphics if you plan to reuse graphics. Um, so take a look at that and if you have any questions with regard to that, please let me know. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, everyone's favourite subject, health and safety. Um, on the right hand side of the slide is the health and safety declaration, risk assessment, food sampling, cooking and alcohol form. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful, but it's basically the one form that you do need to complete. Um, so by law, every single exhibitor must complete this form. So best to get it done now and then you won't have to worry about it and we won't be chasing you for it. Um, it's a very simple form, all online and won't take you too long to complete. Um, certainly if you've done it before, um, you should find it a really quick and easy uh, process. If you have any questions when completing it um, or need us to help you go through it, please do drop us an email. So that's myself, Louisa or Bethany. And I can see that the Candley links have been dropped in there for us um, to run through that form with you. Um, we're more than happy to help you go through it. Um, this form also includes an exhibitor risk assessment, which all of our exhibitors, regardless of whether you're a space or a shell scheme, must complete. The form um, will ask you if you are sampling, uh, so that's whether you're sampling food, drink um, and or alcohol. Uh, if you indicate yes, then further questions of what you plan to sample and how you how it will be stored and served, um, plus a HACCP will be requested to ensure that you're adhering to the necessary food safety. Based on this information um, that you provide, a high, medium or low food safety risk will be issued to you, um, along with uh, additional information, sort of i.e. if you need to hand washing facilities on your stand. So once you've completed the form um, with all the details of what you plan to um, sample, you'll get the information that you need to make sure that you're adhering to that, all the safety issues. It is worth noting now, though, that no matter what you're sampling, we ask that you do consider having hand, uh, san ha hand sanitizer, um, antibacterial wipes and spray um, available on your stand and continue using these throughout the day. Uh, sampling products forms an integral part of the show. And we want to encourage all our exhibitors to do this. Um, and so we will work with you to ensure it's easy and as safe as possible. We ask all items um, are either individually wrapped or single served, um, which would mean that using small shot glasses or pots and putting small samples in each of these for each visitor. Um, and then they can pick those up um, or use a cocktail stick. We want to try and avoid double dipping. So when people, um, when multiple visitors take from the same bowl, um, just to reduce those, that contact. If you have any questions or would like some advice on how best to store, cook or sample your products, we do employ independent, an independent environmental health officer who can provide advice to exhibitors should we not know the answers. So do take advantage of this. It's completely free of charge. Um, so contact us uh, for their details. Um, so if we can't help you, they would certainly be able to help you. Uh, the environmental health officers will also be on site going around to every stand, ensuring that sampling safety is, is happening on site. Uh, whilst I'm covering safety, I would like to remind you that during build up and breakdown, the venue is effectively a building site. Uh, therefore, there are um, as a set of site rules that we do need all our exhibitors and contractors to follow during this time. These are detailed in the operations zone and will be available on site. But I'd like to highlight a few important ones for now. Um, so you must wear a high vis in the loading bay at all times. It's not necessary in the hall, though, but certainly if you need to be um, getting items from a vehicle in the loading bay or you arrive in the loading bay, you will need a high vis to make sure you bring one. Suitable uh, footwear is required, so we won't let anyone in wearing high heels, open toed shoes, or flip flops. So please wear something um, that's ready and suitable for purpose. Um, and use of ladders correctly and safely. So please visit the Stop the Drop website um, for useful advice on how to work safely on this. Um, next slide, please. Um, so as I mentioned before, in within the optional forms, um, you'll have all the order forms 
listed, uh, which you can see on the right hand side. So that's if you wanted to order furniture, a fridge or even a shelf to add to your shelf scheme. That's all there for you. It's very important to meet the deadlines on submitting these forms for the show. So some of these services carry surcharges if not ordered by the deadline date. Um, the items may no, no longer be available as well. So please do bear that in mind. The main one that affects most exhibitors is the electrics. The deadline date um, to submit the electrical order forms is the 12th of August. So I'd recommend putting that in your diary if you um, know you need to order some power. After this date, there will be a 20% surcharge. So to avoid this extra charge, please do order as soon as you can. Um, following on from this, let's just cover some electrics, um, the packages. So if you have ordered a shell scheme stand, please check what is included in your package, as this depends on the, the size of your stand. Um, so you can find those details in the shell specification heading in the operation zone. Uh, the shell scheme stands, for example, three square meters and above will get a 500 watt socket, which is enough power to um, charge a laptop, a phone charger or a small fridge. Um, but if you're planning to plug in equipment that draws more than 500 watts, for example, a microwave, a coffee machine, kettle, freezer, etc., then it is crucial that you um, either upgrade the socket or order an additional power. You can do this via the electrical contractor show light um, and their order form. If you overload the socket, um, then you will blow the power on the whole block of your um, and your neighbours. And you might be quite unpopular with your neighbours. Um, so if you want any advice on what power you would need, please do not hesitate to contact myself, Louisa or Bethany, and we will help with that. Uh, next slide, please. So please remember to book a time slot to unload your vehicle for build up and breakdown. Um, so at, at Olympia, you do need to book this um, to access the loading bay. I want to reiterate how important this is. Um, we need every exhibitor to bring who is bringing a vehicle to book this time, a time slot, um, both to, uh, for build up and breakdown. The Olympia's booking system um, is called Voyage Control and it will go live at midday on the 5th of August. Um, the link can be found in the exhibition timetable section um, and you'll also get an email about it to, re to remind you, but I would recommend putting it in your calendar now to ensure that you don't forget. Um, Olympia are in the middle of significant redevelopment works, which you might remember if you were there last year. Um, and it does mean that the loading space is relatively small and um, has reduced. So I do think you need to book as early as possible to ensure that you get the time slot that you uh, require. Um, please note that you will not be able to park um, using this time slot. It is just a drop off um, or load um, access. Um, and uh, we would highly recommend that for it, you if you can, please don't um, plan to park around the area because there is hardly any parking in that um, area. If you do need to, there is extremely limited access to the motor rail car park, um, which you can find at the Olympia website. Uh, next slide, please. So I thought I'd go through the some venue information. So on this slide, you can see the ground floor facilities. Um, the vehicle access is via BB gate. Um, the organizer's office is in the foyer down at the bottom. Um, there are two cafe areas, so catering areas on the ground floor marked there. Um, the toilets are indicated on this plan as well, along with the first aid phone. Um, so should you need any first aid, um, please call off that phone and then the first aider will come and meet you. Um, to the right of the slide, um, we have mapped out where the pedestrian access of the exhibitors for exhibitors and contractors is during build and breakdown. So it's just above my um, my head. Um, and so that's where you would um, go. Please note that this is different from last year um, and the access is by the main hall entrance on Hammersmith Road. In blue above the Kensington Olympia train station is where the motor rail car park is. So as I said, there's very limited space, um, but 
where possible so where possible please do use other ways of getting to olympia however if driving is the only mode of transport you can do please pre-book this as soon as you can to avoid disappointment and that can be found on the olympia website and for those needing access to the gallery level the goods lift are shown in green as well on this map and then next slide please So here is the map of the gallery level. Um, again, the goods lifts are indicated. So please note where your closest lift is if your um, stand is on the gallery level. And those that have booked stands along the gallery rail, so um, on the outside of that, the bold, um, where those grey rectangles are on the other on the other side of each of them. Um, they they I just wanted to remind you that they must be kept clear and there will be no walling there. Um, so visitors to make sure that visitors can see up to the gallery level um, and also for everyone just to note that nothing can be fixed to venue walling or rails um, unless agreed with us or um, and venue approved. Uh, next slide please. So lastly, just a few reminders. Um, so please do spend some time looking through the operation zone, the shell scheme specifications, electrical information, space only regs, um, and the official suppliers details can all be found here. And hopefully you will find most of the answers you were looking for. Um, part of the operation zone is the exhibition timetable. Please ensure you understand this thoroughly. If you are a space owner yourselves um, uh, or you've appointed a stand builder, you can access from Friday the 2nd of September. Uh, Shell scheme exhibitors have delayed access, so um, we have time to build the stand ourselves um, before you arrive. Those in the gallery level shell scheme stands will be built by midday on Saturday the 3rd, whereas on the ground floor um, you can access from 8am on Sunday the 4th. Um, please ensure that staff are informed of the site rules such as the high-vis requirements in the loading bay and the sensible footwear. If you need a forklift, please contact DSV um, who are formerly known as Agility. Um, they are our lifting and freight company um, and they are the only ones licensed to use a forklift in the hall. Um, I'd also recommend using them for to courier your items. This way you do not need to bring any vehicles to unload or load yourself. You can even deliver that your items to their warehouse um, prior to the show and bring them Bring, and they will bring the items with them um, and then the items will be waiting for you when you arrive on site. This is definitely the most stress-free solution um, to setting up your stand and DSV will have a service desk on site throughout build up and breakdown for any queries or requirements you have. Their details are in the official suppliers and useful contacts page in the operations zone. Um, whether you're using DSV to accept deliveries or an independent courier, please ensure you clearly label with the show name, company name and stand number. It doesn't hurt to add your contact number as well. Um, if you're not using DSV, someone from your company must be on site to accept any deliveries. As organisers, we cannot sign anything um, and cannot take any responsibility for items that arrive on site. So DSV um, do offer this service for a small fee. So if you aren't able to be on site when a delivery is arriving, it's worth contacting them for them to accept that, del that delivery. Um, if you are thinking you will need a trolley, please bring one. There will be no trolleys available for use on site um, and trolleys are like gold dust. So please clearly mark them as yours um, and keep an eye on it at all times. Um, as I mentioned, if parking is required in the motor rail, um, please book this as soon as possible from the Olympia website. And then breakdown, um, I just wanted to cover this as it's going to be extremely busy. So I wanted to make sure that you're aware of a few options um, that, I that are, could be suitable for yourselves. So the first one would be to book voyage control um, via the time slot that suits you when it's live from the 5th of August. And make sure that you've um, packed up all your stand um, before your vehicle is in the loading bay to avoid delays for yourself but also for others. When possible the easiest thing to do would be to hand carry items um, to a legally parked car whether that's in the motor rail or in maybe a hotel car park or a taxi waiting in a, a legal um, waiting area. 
If you um, can pack up all your items securely on a pallet and shrink wrap it, label it clearly with a contact name and number and why not leave it Tuesday night and come back to collect it before midday on the Wednesday the 7th instead. This will be a lot quieter time to collect your items than breakdown night. Um, or like I mentioned before, DSV do offer the service of um, taking your items pre-show but they can also take them post-show and deliver them to your offices or warehouse at a convenient time for you so you don't have to um, take any vehicles on site. It's also worth reminding you that um, like last few years Speciality has partnered with City Harvest um, so if you have any surplus food please donate these by dropping them off to the um, food for thought stage um, on the gallery level if that's where your stand is or tasting trends which is located on the ground floor. Uh, once breakdown commences that's when um, we'd be able to accept those surplus food and this is a great way of getting a speedy exit for yourselves as well because then maybe you won't need a bigger vehicle um, but also you're giving it to charity. Lastly um, if you have lots of operational queries specific to your own stand then you can book this with a time slot with myself, Bethany or Louisa via Calendly. Um, as I said the links are in the chat um, and you can schedule a 15 minute call with us at your own convenience to discuss these queries. And that's everything for me. I appreciate it's a lot of information. So do reach out if you have anything, um, uh, if anything is unclear. Um, if you have any generic operational queries now, please do ask them um, in the chat and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if there's no questions, then I'm passing myself over to Vari, I believe. Hi. <clears throat> Thank you, Emma. Yeah, well, um, I don't think there are any questions. So, um, Vari will pass over to you. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Could I have the next slide, please? Oh. Um, so this just gives you a brief overview of why I'm here and what we've um, do as an agency we're not here to sell to you but we just wanted to give you some context around what we do and how we do it um, if I could have the next slide please um, we all know that creating beautiful content is key to the brand successes um, so I just wanted to get your mouths watering so early on in the morning if I could have the next slide please um, it's really important to plan, plan, plan for shows, plan what success looks like so you know whether you achieve it. These, the, um, This slide deck will be, I believe, available for you to all use in the e-zone so you can come back to it. But these are some key areas that we would recommend that you consider. Um, I'm now going to go into them in some more detail. Next slide, please. So um, we all know that we need success and a show is very much part of that. So you need to consider what makes the show successful for you and how it will achieve, help you to achieve those goals. If you know what the goals are, you can put the stepping stones in place to achieve those goals. Um, how are you going to make it happen? You know, there will be specific requirements around making I don't know, 50 orders at the show or meaning that you get to speak to key buyers. So it will a lot of the legwork will need to go in before you attend the show. If you're looking for new buyers, which ones are you looking for? How are you going to ensure that they come and visit you on your stand? Um, and pitching to the dragon and the awards that close, I believe, at midnight tonight. Um, the speciality team have put together a series of awards which you should enter if you're exhibiting. Um, but also attending those networking drinks um, on the evening of the Monday night, I, I believe it is. Um, they're all key elements and lots of people that we know who've exhibited over the years. There's so much great work that's done in those networking events that they are a must to attend if you can. Um, next slide, please. Um, consider what would make the show successful for you and how... Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, the comms plan, getting this right is really, really important and that needs to start now. So it's simple things like making sure that your stand number is on your email signature, that you've created an event on LinkedIn and on Facebook and invited buyers to it, that you're sharing it across your social media, but you've got your link in your link tree to make sure that people know that they can register for a ticket. 
if you send out invoices, put a copy of the show invite in there. Um, snail mail really does work at the moment because we're receiving so much um, less of it. Um, so send out invites, make those buyers feel that you really want to see them. Um, joining the conversation on social media and the forums and the hubs, there's great conversations going on all the time um, and make sure you're part of those. Um, I would also strongly advocate that you get involved in the PR piece pre-show. So if you've got something really new and exciting that you're launching, make sure that the Montgomery team know about it, that they've tried it, um, but also work with your PR team to get the message out there to key um, publications. Next slide, please. Um, maximizing your time at the show on site. First impressions really count. Um, I recently went to a show in Birmingham where I stopped a pie stand and the guy could not have looked less interested as to me stopping at his pie stand. And he, when I asked, when he asked who I was and where I was from, um, he was like, oh, right, fine, and then dismissed it. But what he doesn't know is who I know and who I can introduce him to. So as much as it's their long days and it's hard to put a smile on your face all the time, try and teach, treat everyone as if they're a big opportunity, however big or small they are, because you just don't know who they know. Um, make sure you've offered samples to the press office. Um, there's a number of different demo stages um, to get product in hand is a really, really important element, um, because if your product can be used in those demo stages, it reinforces how versatile it is and buyers may see it and they normally need to see it more than once to kind of go, oh, yeah, this is one for me. Um, data is key. So if you if a buyer visits you, make sure you get the contact details so you can carry on that conversation. Um, have a plan and know what's on. So if you're pitching, you know what time it is so you're not rushing from A to B too much. Um, a smile and passion for your product speaks a thousand words. I'm sure Adrian will comment on this at a late, in, later in this morning's proceedings, um, as will Marcus. It's really important that you convey the passion and the why for your product so that buyers buy into it. Um, enter the show awards, which we've already discussed, um, and kind of schedule your social media so that you are still part of that conversation, even though you're busy on your stand and you're still saying, come and visit me. I'm here. Um, this is what we're all about. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, follow up, follow up, follow up. This is a massive missed opportunity by a lot of people. One email isn't going to cut it. It's, you know, if you've spent the time standing on your stand for two days and you've spent X number of thousands of pounds paying for stand, hotels, sampling, all of the good stuff that you're doing, it's absolutely vital that you follow up on everything and you follow up not once, twice, three times. Tenacity is required and you just don't know where that buyer is in their buying cycle as to whether your product fits for the now or whether it fits for the autumn. So follow up, but don't harangue. It's a fine line, um, but you need to make sure that you really follow up and make sure that all your emails are going out and that you follow up with phone calls. If you can, download your data every evening and schedule it to send to your pre your new database that you're gaining um, and get that newsletter written well in advance of the show so that you've got a really clear message with a CTA um, and yeah everything's in place for success. Um, plan out what your follow-up looks like before so whether you do a, po a post show email and then 10 days later then a call then a you know month add them to your monthly newsletter. Um, share your successes with the organizers. So if you land a big order or a key retailer that you've really, really wanted, share that story with the team behind the event because they want to hear your good news stories and they'll want to shout about it. Um, if you, if we can help in any way, please feel free to give us a call. Oh, I think there's one more slide. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, Vara is still there. And then Vara, I didn't know if you just wanted to let us know about the um, charity. Yep, um, more than happy to do that. If we can go on to the next slide deck. There we go. Um, 
Great. So we're absolutely delighted to be working with Speciality um, as one of their charity partners. Um, we are all about planting trees and hedging for biodiversity and carbon capture, as well as flood prevention. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, I started creating Nature's Corridors uh, about 18 months ago now, um, after my brother died age 37 of sudden adult death syndrome. And I've used creating Nature's Corridors to leave a legacy um, for him, as well as me and my sister in this very cheesy photo in our special outfits that mum had bought us. Um, yeah, it's really, it's a passion project for me. And it's been part of my way of coping with the sheer loss of a big brother well he was much taller than me a big brother um if i could have the next slide please um we are on a mission to plant over ten thousand hedges and trees across the uk um per year our vision is to ensure that everyone has access to a community wood that we create more corridors where nature can thrive um, and we can all enjoy it we all know the situation the planet's in at the moment and we're really keen to make a difference but we will only ever plant in the uk next slide please um this is some of the work we've done so far so the image on the left with the young lad in the orange t-shirt that's my brother's little boy um and we planted uh, a range of fruit trees in his in the community garden near their home we've also worked with a tree guardian called saffron grange who are based on the cambridgeshire essex border um and we've worked with another local school in cambridgeshire cambridgeshire is the least wooded county in the country so we've been working really hard to help rectify this um, we are looking for tree guardians who have spaces that can be enjoyed by the community um, for which we will come and plant free trees and hedging in those spaces um, we have planted over a thousand trees so far and we have ten and a half thousand trees pledged for this autumn. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> so we're a small charity, um, but we are achieving great benefits to our environment our, and our community and each plant we plant has an impact. We only ever plant the right tree in the right location. So we're learning about the ancient woodlands that we had and how we can replicate those, but also how we plant for our planet as it is now um, and making it future proof. Um, we're looking for more tree guardians to help us manage these woods and communities and, and corridors. If I could have the next slide, please. Um, what you what you can do if you would love to buy some trees we would love to hear from you you can offset your carbon with our with planting trees you can also engage with your tribe and your communities for your brands by saying initiatives such as by x we plant a tree for everything sold you can help come and plant we always need more volunteers as you can imagine with ten and a half thousand trees to plant i'm going to have a very bad back um, also, you can donate a percentage. We've, we're delighted to say that we've just been approved as one of the 1% for the planet um, delivery partners. So businesses that are registered with 1% for the planet, we can now deliver their um, projects. We also take legacy donations. Um, and if you can just spread the word amongst your customers and your friends, that would be amazing. We're really keen to make a difference. Next slide, please. Um, we really need to take action now, and that's why we're absolutely delighted to be planting a tree for every single exhibitor with speciality this year. Um, we have lost so much. To lose 40% of our woodland since the Second World War is massive, and we really need to make it better. Next slide, please. These are some of the partners we have so far. Um, so, yeah, we're absolutely delighted to be working with all of these brands to help make a difference. Um, yeah, it's very, very exciting. Next slide, please. So if you feel that you want to get involved in either bunging on a pair of wellies and digging out your spade, um, please get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. We, I will be at the show um, visiting clients and, um, yeah, hosting a talk. So I look forward to meeting you then. But in the meantime, um, please get in contact if you have any questions. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fari. Some really valuable um, tips and tricks. Um, and also, we're really proud to be partnering with um, with the charity and planting a tree for every 
um, exhibitor. So thank you. Um, now we're going to pass over to Nicola, um, who's our PR director um, for some tips on PR. Hi everyone, uh, thanks very much for joining us today. Um, as Nikki said, I'm the PR director for the fair. Um, I'd love to just um, echo what a lot of what Vary was saying. Please just get in touch with us as quickly as possible um, with your news and with, especially with your new product news, any awards or sustainability credentials that you have. Um, and just communicate with us anything you're planning to do on site. Some of our exhibitors have guest chefs, for example, or um, on stand events. And yeah, just please just keep in touch. Um, let us know what you're doing and we'll help you promote it as much as possible. Uh, next slide, please. advice from one of our press partners here um the editor of speciality food holly shackleton i got in touch with her just to ask um what advice she would give our exhibitors if um you're planning to reach out and and to get in touch with potential news so she's saying if she's getting in touch just make sure you get back to her quickly because she's building the schedule for her magazines respect the, de the deadlines obviously working with print de print deadlines it's really important to um, let them know if you're not going to be able to me um, meet a deadline and to just keep them in the loop keep it brief but polite in the email um, and attach your press release as an attachment um, and just yeah just get straight to the point with what your news is and stick to the brief if they ask you for a specific comment or a word count as well uh, next slide please um, so these are just some of the trade press that we either work with or have covered the show in the past. Um, if you want to reach out to me after this, um, I can let you know more specific details of, of the journalists that we work with and some of the names um, of the people that we work with specifically. Um, a lot of these magazines are print publications and, you know, we've only got a few months left before the show. Um, so I'd really encourage you to reach out ASAP with your especially new product news and information about your business so that we can include you in any um, trade press previews that we're putting together with these partners. Next slide please. And yep this is just some um, information for getting in touch with me if you'd like to. Um, we've got our PR email address and also my personal email. Um, if you want to inquire about getting some products into the press office at the show this year um, do reach out and let me know. Um, and also make sure that you, send, as I've said, send us new product information as, as soon as possible. We have a paperless press office, so um, any press releases and press packs that you want to send, to, send over will be put into our um, virtual press um, drop box. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions and please do get in touch. I'll just pass you over now to Maddie, who is the marketing manager for the show. Hello everyone. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> so I'm going to take you over the uh, exhibitor zone. Um, so yesterday we sent out the your password emails, so you should be able to find these now and sign onto the e zone. Just as a note, um, that. Pass, that password email could potentially be in your junk folder. So please do um, look in your junk folder for that. Um, there's a link in this email to your login um, and you'll need to click on this link within the email the first time you log in to set up your password to make sure you can log on. Um, the, uh, there are four main steps. Um, compulsory steps that you need to fill out when you enter the e-zone. These are the industry sectors, um, selecting your business categories, selecting your business attributes, and also um, part of your exhibitor profile. So you'll see these four things before you can enter the main e-zone, but the main e-zone will look like it does on the right hand side here. And whilst you're in the e-zone, it sort of, it, it comes up as a, as an extra sort of box window within uh, your uh, browser. So if you do accidentally X out of it in the top uh, right hand corner, you can you'll find uh, the e zone again in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And you can see that little black box there saying logged in as Maddie Laws. That'll be in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. So you can just click enter e zone to uh, get back in there. Next slide, next slide please. Within the e-zone, there's a couple of drop down menus and bits and pieces, but I wanted to take you through the exhibitor profile and all of the bits and pieces within it. So the main one to do is updating your company profile. So this 
uh, will uh, comprise of your logo, company information, website link. Um, you'll put in the email address you want clients to be able to contact you in here, um, as well as your social channels. Your then after completing your company profile that will be live on our uh, exhibitor list on our website. Um, we would love you to upload your products on here as well. So um, all of our visitors to the show can see your lovely products. Um, next, after that, uh, sorry about the location of all these arrows. <laughs> They're a little bit off skew, <laughs> but each one, um, each one goes down accordingly. Um, next, uh, if you need to reselect or edit your business categories that you selected when you first logged in, you can reselect them in here if you need to edit those at all. Same with the business attributes. And uh, then we also have uh, your target audience. So let us know more about who um, you are intending to target at the show so we can um, we can uh, make sure that visitors are searching for the right types of things. Um, there is also a section for let us know more about you and yourself. This isn't going to be viewable on our live website, but this is just so we can know a little bit more about you so we can influence those future matchmaking, op matchmaking opportunities with buyers. Um, after that, uh, please upload your company news and your press releases and anything that you are doing within your company. This will be displayed uh, on our website on your exhibitor uh, profile page and also any video content that you have. And the last one on there is a profile checklist just to, just to go through all of the things above um, to make sure that you've completed your exhibitor profile. Next slide, next slide please. <laughs> Um, also, in the eZone, you'll find our marketing toolkit. Uh, so within the marketing toolkit, we have a link to a form uh, which you can fill in to tell us your news. So as Nicola was saying um, about the PR, we want to hear what you're doing. We want to hear about your new product launches, your company news, uh, not just today, but 365 days a year. So Regardless of just this e-zone, please let us know about it and uh, you can find this form and it's also on our website and we'll be able to send that to you. Um, the next one in here, we also have created some handy, nifty, uh, downloadable free social graphics for you to use. Um, so please download these and use these as you like. There's a selection of different types of images in there as well as some videos as well. Um, next is the top tips for exhibiting. So here you'll find loads of different top tips from us and our partners for um, having a smooth exhibiting experience. After that, we have a section which is a form for tell us who you want to meet. So we want to help you connect with the buyers that you might be struggling to contact yourself. So we have a huge uh, database of visitors. So tell us the few details of the people that you want to meet and we'll see if we'll if we will try and invite them for you. Obviously, we can't do we can't give you their contact details due to GP, GDPR, but we can certainly inform you if we have them on our list and if we're um, we're able to invite them to the show. So just let us know in there. Uh, after that and coming soon uh, is the create your badges uh, section. So this is where you will create all of your exhibitor badges for your um, for your team. This will come in around about August time. But please, please, I must stress. Oh no, has it gone? <laughs> okay, it's come back. <laughs> um, please, please uh, do not let any of your colleagues register through our visitor registration as they will end up having limited access to the venue and won't be able to get in at the correct times. And then right at the bottom, there's the manage this account. So this is anything to do with the management of your eZone account. Such, so if you wanted to add um, any other of your colleagues to, uh, to be a manager of this account, you'll be able to do it here. But just as a little note, please uh, make sure that when you've added them, you'll see this on the bottom right hand corner, Select, make sure that you send the login details to them. This will generate an email that they'll then be able to log in from. Next slide, please. So this page here is uh, the live exhibitor list as it looks right now. So it's in, the reason that I'm showing you this is that 
we want you to understand how important it is to update your profile. So at the moment, everyone has a default to uh, just the speciality and fine food fair logo. So you want to make sure that you update your logo and update your company profile because this is live right now. And we want people to be able to filter uh, on our filters and find uh, your companies correctly. Next slide, please. And next is our live product list. So since yesterday and uh, sending out uh, the password emails, we've already had a couple of people sign in and upload those products. So well done to those people because that's great. So we there's not many products on here right now, but there will be once uh, you guys all upload your product. So it's really important to upload them as soon as possible to get your stuff out there and get those things shown. Um, so this is how it will look online and it should be uh, much better uh, in the next couple of weeks. Next slide, please. Um, Maddie, there's a question that just relates to that. Um, is there a limit on the number of products that can be uploaded? So we have currently a limit of 10 products, but if you do need uh, any uh, more products to be uploaded, please just let us know and we'll put in uh, an email address in here that you'll be able to do that from. So uh, onto these these uh, bits on here, just a couple of extra pieces not related to the E-Zone, but we wanted to make sure that you knew about. So firstly is our awards. We have extended the deadline for our awards until the 7th of July, so this Thursday. And uh, we wanted to let you know that there is a product awards in here. So it's only open to people who are exhibiting at Speciality and Fine Food Fair Awards. So if you would like your products to be entered into the, our free awards, please enter them by this Thursday. And you can do that on our website. Then we have sponsorship opportunities as well. Uh, just a note to uh, get if you are thinking of advertising and sponsoring uh, different bits and pieces with us or are interested, please contact Izzy and uh, she will be able to um, help you uh, decide on those options. Then uh, we would like to uh, announce uh, our Pitch Live competition uh, sponsored by Virgin Startup, uh, which is going to be opening today via our website. So this is an opportunity to pitch your product live to some of the industry's top buyers. So what we'll do from the, uh, from the entries is, um, is select three finalists and they'll be invited to deliver a Dragon's Den style pitch on our Food for Thought stage live at the fair. So as I said, submissions are opening today and we will send around an email uh, after this um, this enhancement day, uh, where you'll be able to um, enter into that uh, opportunity. And then lastly on here uh, is uh, invite your contacts. So when visitor registration opens, we would really love for you to invite your clients and prospects to uh, visit you at the event. Um, this reg registration will go live uh, most likely late July or early August, but what we will do is we'll give you each a unique code uh, to send them, send your clients, uh, which will redeem them a VIP upgrade because we want to make sure that they have a really good experience with us as well. Next slide, please. And then just lastly, uh, on social media, these are this is our um, social media handle and uh, also hashtag as well. And there's a couple of top tips here. But as I said, in the E-Zone, you'll be able to download um, a couple of uh, visual assets. And there's just an example here on the right hand side from last year of a nice, uh, a nice social post that um, practices last did uh, about, their, um, um, about themselves exhibiting at there. Next slide, please. And now uh, that's everything from me. So I'll hand over to Marcus. We'll hand back to Nikki first. <laughs> all, all great from my side. Thank you very much, Maddie. Some really valuable tips. Um, and I'll pass over to you, Marcus. We just on mute, Marcus. Uh, 
and we seem to have lost Marcus, but he's coming back. There he is. <laughs> Over to you, Marcus. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yes, we can. Can. yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect. Next slide. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> right, so we, I think I've got an extra five, ten minutes, so uh, I won't go as quickly as I thought. Uh, I've been doing speciality for 20, 30 years, started off at Patchwork Foods with my mum, exhibiting right through to, we did IFE, uh, I've done loads of international food shows, trade shows. Um, and then right through to running Artisan Food Club at Speciality. Next slide. This is really important, okay? <laughs> Lots of things are really important, but you need to get a floor plan and make a map, okay? Bari talks about sending invites in the post to buyers. If you've got key people that you want to see at the show, you need to send them a map with your stand, with the picture of, of your logo or something, just so that they know where you are, you know, or at least they've seen where you are, you know, that they've, for, you know, for a split second or five seconds that they actually clocked where your stand is. Also, when you're at the show, have five or 10 printed um, maps with you, because there's nothing worse. You're in the bathroom, you're in a cafe, you're having a cigarette outside, you're a pizza express on the corner. You see somebody and they go, oh, I didn't know you were here. Yeah, yeah, we've got a stand. We're upstairs. Come and see us. And then two days later, you're home and they never came to see you. So you would just hand them a map. So if you're out walking the show and you see somebody, hand them a map. I mean, don't, don't, don't go on to other people's stands doing it, but, you know, meet somebody in the aisles. But really important that you've got maps of where you are. OK, thank you. Next one. Dun, dun, dun. Mock up your show, okay? Nothing, the amount of times I've seen producers turning up at shows, scratching their heads going, well, it's a lot smaller than I thought it was. Um, mark, it out with, uh, mark it out on the floor. You can do it with sellotape in your house or you can do it in the yard or on the pavement outside. But make sure that you've, that you've chalked out the map and you've set it up. You've stood in there. You've felt how it feels. You've just got a good idea about what you're going to be when you get there you know nothing particularly if you've got one of the smaller startup stands you know um one meter by two meters or coming quite what they are but it's pretty tight you know just get a feel stand in it work with it and and just experience what it's like next now <laughs> stop everyone that walks past the stand okay now the amount of people i see when it gets quiet they sort of move back into their stand. Well, I'm the opposite. When it gets quiet, I move out of my stand. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get in trouble with um, everyone at uh, Montgomery, but you know, you need to talk to everyone. You know, as soon as I arrive at the show, I get my badge scanned, I say good morning. I walk past security, I say good morning. I walk past stall holders, I say good morning. There's people tidying up, cleaning, putting flooring down, fixing things. I say good morning. I get into the habit of just talking to everybody, everybody I say good morning to, because that's the mode that you be in for the rest of the day. Somebody walks past the stand, you say good morning. You know, I can remember um, being <laughs> like you do. I was at the Fancy Food Show in New York with the Welsh Development Agency. We were, I was talking to somebody on the stand. And I saw these three or four guys walk past me out my side of my eye. And I just sort of, I was still talking to the people I was talking to. I just said, hey, guys, how you doing? Just, you know, if you've got a second, I'll, I'll only be a minute. You know, that sort of implied to the people that I was talking to that we weren't going to be there for very long. Just kept, you know, got them on the stand. There were the guys from Whole Foods. Now, it didn't go anywhere, but we had a good chat for 10 minutes. And um, what I'm trying to get at is that you need to be, the expression is a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Uh, a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. You just need to be aware of everybody that's walking past. If I see somebody walking past, I say, hey, guys, do you own a shop? And they go, no. And I go, fantastic. If you buy a shop, I'll be back here next year. Or do you own a shop? And they say, yes. And I say, it's this sort of stuff that might be interesting. That's just how I break the thing now. Most people can't take in all the information around them. Well, it, nobody can. It's far too much information. Your brain has to filter down, you know. If you decide to buy a car, you suddenly see everybody's driving the car. It's not that you suddenly see everyone's driving the car. It's just that it wasn't part of your filter system. So you just filtered them out. Now it's part of your filter system. So a lot of people 
It's not that they don't stop and see your stand, stop at your stand. They just don't see you. So being able to sort of just break the concentration for a second. Hey, how you doing? They look at you. They look at the stand. They go, oh, uh, no, I'm all right. Or they go, oh, actually, hang on a sec. We wanted to talk about that. So it's just a, a way of just breaking somebody's concentration as they walk past. And also, if you're talking to somebody, but just long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs, just be aware of everybody that's around your stand. And everybody you say hello, good morning or something too. OK, next. 30 second qualifier. <laughs> qualify. I'll be as quick as I can. So this is how I do it. OK, if I owned a product. OK, so somebody goes by, you go, hi. Uh, do you know our company or product? If they say yes, you go, um, great. Is it through the shop? If they say no, you say, let me tell you about your company. When you say, tell me a little bit about your company, it's five seconds, it's 10 seconds. I make chutney, they're absolutely amazing. We've won loads of awards. We make a fantastic soup, uh, no preservatives or additives, it's whatever, you know. Just two key points, two or three really quick key points, 10, 15 seconds tops about your company. Not well, let me tell you, I was on my gap year and I went to the Himalayas and we found these berries and I brought them back on a donkey and, you know, I hand, you know, no, it's it's two key things. OK, because you don't know who you're talking to at this point. Then you say, what type of business are you? So they let you know, you say, great, what type of business are you? And then you say, and this is a little bit of a tricky one. You then say, oh, that's fantastic. Can I just ask your position in the company? Because you need to ascertain who you're talking to. A lot of people go to the trade show with with members of staff that are not qualified to buy, with partners, loved ones, friends that they're staying with in London that they get a, a ticket for. You know, they're all legitimately part of the of the business, but not actual decision makers. So you basically you've got 30 seconds to find out that you're talking to an owner and that they're in a position to buy or they're in a position to buy and they're a buyer okay i mean obviously if it says selfridges or whole foods or you know but a lot of farm shops you know bring members of staff which is fantastic because they're out looking around but you just need to work out not spend 15 minutes finding out that you know the person that you're talking to now you could flip that around and say, well, actually, if they go off and talk to the owner and bring them back and whatever, but unlikely. So all I'm saying is you just got 15, 30 seconds just to qualify who you talk. Hi, do you know a company or product? No, quick. Let me tell you a quick little bit about me, about what we do. Wow. What sort of business are you? Oh, really fantastic. That sounds like an amazing shop. What's your position there? Well, I'm, you know, you go fantastic. Right. Let's get into it. OK, next. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, selling bundles. OK, <laughs> you've got to have something in your mind that you're selling. You know, it's a trade show trade. I'm going to say it again. It's a trade show. It's not a go and meet people show. It's not a build my social contact show. It's not a taste panel show. It's a trade show. You're there to do business. OK, now, just for instance, you're making um, rhubarb chutney. Some people turn up, they're actually looking for rhubarb chutney. They come onto your stand, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. We're really excited. We want to place an order. Fantastic. Okay. Say thank you. They've just saved you a lot of money. Always add in a couple of extra things, right? But, you know, it's really important that all you've got a show deal. I think I cover show deals on the next few slides, but really important you've got a deal. But if, if somebody gives you an outright order, then, um, you know, you just be grateful. <laughs> it's a fantastic, it does happen, you know, if they've gone through the brochure. Introduction orders or trial orders, you know, you might say, um, we normally work on about eight case minimum order, but we know we're happy to get out, say, three or four cases just to get you started. That's how I built the food club. That's how I built all my food businesses. Um, I mean, that's a different subject <laughs> completely, but, you know, asking a shop to invest in eight cases when they don't know anything about the product or sales is, is virtually impossible. You know, it, it just doesn't happen in 2022. Um, offer to send them a small range after the show. Um, I'm not a big fan of samples at the show. They're heavy to carry in. People have to carry them around. You know, I'd much rather that they receive some samples at their office or shop after the show, you know, when, and also that we've double checked afterwards on the phone that they, you know, that, that it's something that they'd be interested in. Or commit to a phone call. You know, you'd say, look, busy at the show great that you're really interested you think we could chat maybe next week you know is, is 10 o'clock a good time to phone you so 
try and get some sort of commitment. This is a much massiver subject, right? I'd have to cover this in a lot more detail if, if uh, you know. But some people turn up and want to place an order. That's great. At some point, you've got to ask for an order, okay? Normally, within three to five minutes, you should have been moving your conversation towards, is this something that you think might work in the shop? How about we start off with a small order and get some stock out to you next week? But you've got to be thinking about closing. You know, it's the old, you know, always be closing. But, you know, you you can't be scared of asking for an order. You know, you're in the most perfect sales environment. You're at a trade show. You've got stock on the stand. You've got product. You've got buyers. You've got shelves. You've got shops. They've got consumers. You know, it, it's the best environment you're going to have to actually utter those words, which is, how would you feel about placing an order? And then you need to decide what sort of offer you're offering them as a first order, but it's got to be juicy. Okay, next slide. And just going back one as well, you know, you, <laughs> well, I'll cover it with this one. Show offers are 50%, okay? I, I get so frustrated when I see order today and get 10% discount at a trade show. 10% works on a consumer because if you're giving 10 percent off a 20 pound order that's two pounds saving i'm now getting a 20 pound order for eight quid as a 18 quid <laughs> as a consumer 10 percent is really fantastic as a retail buyer or as a retail shop by the time you've taken it all in and taken 10 percent off the wholesale price and then all the retail it's very little saving it's just not really worth jumping into bed with a company for 10 percent 50 percent you've got my attention because if we've got eight boxes sorry if we've got four boxes you're charging me for two you're giving me two i'm now making a hundred percent retail on the two cases that you gave me and i'm making 40 percent retail on the two cases that you sold me but overall that's a good chunk of change i'm really interested in reality those two free cases probably cost you eight to 10 quid, tw 20, 15 quid tops if they're in cases of six. Yet you've now got an order because you had a deal that was actually worth paying attention to. But 10% is not a trade deal. That's a consumer offer. It's not a trade offer. Trade offers are 50% or not. Soul Store West opened up on Kilburn High Road. <laughs> this was a long time ago. I did try and find the date the other day. Um, on their, there we go, 2017. And I said to Sarah, I said, look at that. They're offering 50% off. We just went and had dinner there. Why wouldn't you go and have dinner at 50% off? It's a great offer. Next slide, please. These guys opened up on <laughs> near Partridge's Gloucester Road. And they did a 50% off, got swamped, absolutely swamped because it was such a good deal. It's a good deal, it's a massive deal for consumers, but it's a no brainer for trade. Um, but they had to shut down after two days because they had too many people turning up. But anyway, it just makes me laugh that. Uh, next slide, please. Scanners work, okay, I've, all, I've resisted them for years. Um, they do work, um, you know, how much you want to use them. I mean, they're certainly good if you've got people on the stand that, that aren't full-time employees. Um, I still like to back up with pen or paper, um, but that's just my age. Um, but they do work, it's great. You can get all the email addresses, email everybody that evening. Um, you know, it, they, they do work well. And also you get everyone's mobile numbers. I mean, it's funny, <laughs> again, my age. You know, ten years ago, to try and get somebody's mobile number off them was was a was a, an art form. Okay, a very dark art form. Nowadays, people put their mobile numbers everywhere. You know, I mean, you know, when I finished the speciality food show, you know, quite big buyers have been on the stand, and their mobile numbers are on the um, on the scanning sheet. You know, um, <laughs> phoning them and getting them to answer is a different story, but at least you got it. And then I just use WhatsApp anyway. Uh, right. Okay. Next slide please. Uh, these are the forms that I use. You know, this is when I had my own source company. You know, the other nice thing about this is, so that's the one that I fill in. I, have I put the next, can you put the next slide up? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I, the reason I have paper slides is I have two 
paper sheets is I have two. I have one that I keep and one that they keep. Um, but the can we go back a slide? Is that possible? Am I going to create havoc here? Right. The, what's good about this system is when you hand them the, the clipboard, OK, um, and you say to them, can you just put your shop name and address and everything on the on the page? Um, while they're doing it, they look on the right hand. I'm pointing here. That's not very helpful, is it? But, but on the right hand side, they see it and they go, oh, do you know what? Go on, then I'll put I'll put one in and they actually place an order. So with this form collecting their data with a pen and paper, um, it actually gives them the opportunity to place an order while they're while they're on the stand, while they're filling the details in. So it's not a bad way. You know, you've done your 30 second qualifier. You've had a quick chat about the product, quick chat about the product, not 10 minutes about your history. Quick chat about the product, ascertain that they've, they've got desire in the shop, they've got consumers that might buy it. You say, great, can we take some details? And you might find that a good chunk of people actually go, go on, then go on. I'll take a sticky garlic, a piri piri and a sweet mustard. Yeah. And then you find you've got an order. You know, you didn't even have to ask for it. You're just collecting the details, but you gave them the opportunity to order. Right. Sorry. Next slide. Oh, time. I think I've got 15 minutes. So what I do is I always say a receipt. You know, you wouldn't leave your laptop at a, a shop without a receipt. You wouldn't um, do certain things without a receipt. Again, people take this home. They have it in their papers. You can mark on it what they um, what they were interested in, and it's just a receipt for what was discussed on the sedan. But it's really important that you send, particularly farm shops, delis, butchers, home with something that actually reminds them of what was said and done on the day. Otherwise, you're just phoning up, going, you know, I was the chutney at the top of the. Uh, no, I can't remember. Um, better to take home fifty good leads than one hundred and fifty random leads. OK, I've got this saying that says he who leaves the show with the most leads does not win. OK, follow up leads in my books cost 50 quid. OK, by the time you've made phone calls, emails, refoned, resent the email, phoned up, possibly sent samples. You know, you're looking at a good 50 quid per lead. So make sure that when you take a lead that you qualify that they're actually to follow up you know that you're not wasting their time and more importantly not wasting your time but if you leave the show with 50 with 100 leads that's five grand you know over and it's going to take you six months to get through eight months to get through those 100 leads so make sure that when you're on the stand be thinking you know qualifying all the time checking that the person that you're um going to be following up with is is actually got some interest in the product and again that's a much massive subject you know phone calls emails visits samples um they were on your stand you know i've also got this you've got their full attention you know if if you can't sell something to them there and then i struggle to understand how you're going to get a better result on the phone two weeks later you know but you've got to be in the mindset that you've got a good offer you've got something and there's desire and need and that the risk of buying your stock at the show is is lower than the the reward that they could get if it sells but anyway, that's a much bigger subject next please social media and twitter you know always tag i think we've covered this always tag the show and then hopefully somebody will will re retweet it as or the same with all the social media stuff you know try little giveaways you know i've got two cases to give away on the first person that turns up show me the money I, no idea i've never done it but I always think, <laughs> trouble is, you get to the show with great intentions. I turned up one year and I wanted to do loads of um, little video selfies. And I had and I thought about it and I planned it and I did everything. And it was all set. I was really excited. I shit you not, <laughs> I got there. Two days later, I was breaking down and I went, oh, my God, I completely forgot. OK, but anyway, maybe that's just me. So everything you've got planned, making it happen is can be different when you get into that tunnel at the trade show and collecting orders right there we go <laughs> that's a good idea to move the slides it keeps me going rate your leads um you know make sure you make good notes you know don't just take people's cards don't just get them to fill in if somebody's on the stand and which again why i like paper you know make some notes you know lovely guy was going out for dinner with his wife really nice farm shop they're looking to expand their range in this category um, it's something that, you know, so when you phone them up, you're actually following on a conversation. You know, it's not 
hi do you remember me we were you know it's it's actually you've got some proper notes that actually keep the conversation going from when you left okay next please uh oh i think that was it uh follow up okay book a show book time after the show now what tends to happen is you attend the trade show monday tuesday everything goes really well you're back home tuesday night you unpack and you're back into production or you're back into clearing your emails or you're back into whatever the, the role in the business that you've got by nine, 10 o'clock on Wednesday. And next thing, it's November, December and it's Christmas. And now it's January and you've still got a pile of leads on your desk because you didn't book any time after the show. If you're going to commit to do a trade show, commit to at least not. So if it's Monday, Tuesday speciality, probably Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I would just do some sort of follow up email just to keep the iron in the fire but certainly the monday tuesday wednesday of the following week or the tuesday wednesday slash thursday morning mondays are always busy order days for retailers tuesday wednesday thursday up morning if they're not booked out in your diary i'm not saying don't do it but why did you go to the freaking trade show if you haven't booked time to actually implement what you went to achieve you know i see it in international trade shows so many times when i used to go to japan or america I would stay for an extra week, which was lovely. And I would make sure I did all my follow-ups in the country in the same time zone for the sake of four or five extra nights in a hotel. I was actually on site, you know, I, in Japan, it was great because we go and visit all the buyers that came to the stand. Right, next slide. I'm going to run out of time. <laughs> it's choice, okay? <laughs> I'm a simple man with a very small brain. So I, I love minimal stands. You know, I, I get frustrated isn't the right word but i you know people spend so much time on their stand and forget all it's it's about the product all people need to see is the product uh, next slide so look at nom nom on the left there i said to liam i said how much was your stand he said i don't know a couple of quid for the sheet of paper quid for the sheet of paper flowers yeah but he was that's it. What what more do you need to know except to see the chocolate bars? Same with Zeet. You know, he used his boxes that he went in, a couple of stuckers on the wall. Away he goes. We're looking down at the olive oil. We're looking down at the at the olives. You know, we're we're focusing on the product. You know, to me, people put all these peacock feathers up, and you know, you you can't even see the peacock because <laughs> you're too busy looking at the feathers. <laughs> I nearly said something rude there. <laughs> Right. Anyway, you know what we're trying to focus on here. Next slide before I dig deep. Um, again, you know, lovely guys. I think they're still going in Argentina, but it's quite hard to see the product. You know, it's quite hard to see the product against the woodwork. I get what they were doing. I understand, you know, but it, it's tough to see the product. You know, if you just stuck all those on a table and had the three guys stood behind them, you know, anyway, just my opinion. Uh, next slide, please. I don't I think that says it all <laughs> don't put chairs on your stand don't sit down you know whatever or oh, he'll keep me moving work hard on your stand you know always have your folder out always look like you're ready to do business always be ready look busy look look like you're there to 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 sell next please this was a setup I mean I will there, there is a guy that, that there's a porter at uh, speciality called H I'll put his number in the chat box afterwards, but he's fantastic. He, you meet him downstairs. He puts all your stuff on a trolley and takes it up to your stand for you. 50 quid, I think he charges. Best 50 quid I've ever spent at any trade show. Um, so there we go. Next slide, sorry. <laughs> Branded T-shirts, you know, have T-shirts if you've got people turning up. Um, you know, make sure if you've got friends, uh, if got spare few T-shirts, put them on. Nick had his little T-shirt on running around the stand it's uh make sure you're branded up again you know the amount of people that go to trade shows and don't have branded t-shirts on it, it just freaks me out anyway there we go oh next slide <laughs> end thoughts right go hit the phones afterwards uh, you've got to get commitment on the stand yeah everybody's phoning up well you'd be surprised how many people don't phone up after a trade show but you know you need to know when you're phoning up that it's following on okay if a shop won't give you an order or a discount deal at the show or take an introduction order, 
you know, trust your gut, you know, trying to convince them after the show to place an order is going to be tough. You had them in the best environment ever to sell your product. It's also funny. People say to me, you know, <laughs> two hours into the first day, but you're glad when this show's over. I'm like, no, I've got a room full of buyers. I've got all my products. I don't want this to ever end. You know, once this show finishes, I'm back to bloody cold calling people off the internet. Now, <laughs> don't be cross with me, Montgomery. I'm opening a deli in 12 months is a bit of a ruse, okay? There's a lot of people that were worked in the industry, still work in the industry, aren't necessarily, um, you know, in a direct position, but it's a bit of a ruse, okay? Just be mindful of I'm opening a deli in 12 months. It's particularly if they've got shopping trolleys, although COVID did stop a lot of that. But going back a few years, you know, on, certainly on the last day, I'm opening a deli in 12 months. And by the way, I bought a shopping trolley with me um, or bags, you know, anyway, <laughs> I get myself in trouble saying that. But just be mindful of those of those ones. Eat a big breakfast. OK, don't get hungry at the show. I always eat a massive breakfast. Nibbling, nibbling at the show isn't a problem, but you just feel sick. You actually feel physically sick by the time you've had salamis and cheeses and ice cream and just because you were bored and walking, mind you, I'm never bored at a trade show, but just be mindful. Never sit down, end dead on your feet, drink lots of water, take at least six litres of water, bottles of water when you set up. Um, it's better to drink warm water all day than, than forget to take it in, but make sure when you set up, you take at least a case of, of still water. Wear comfy shoes. I always say look smart from the knees up. Um, Whoever judges somebody at a trade show for not wearing smart shoes, I think, needs shooting. I always wear shorts and flip-flops. Um, and treat every new client like they're the first of the day. I can tell you many stories, um, situations where 5 o'clock, 10 to 5, everyone's breaking down. I had a lady from Lagos that spent thousands of pounds with me that, that just came onto the stand at 5 to 5. We had Roger Biddle many years ago at Patchwork came onto the stand at 10 to 5, 5 to 5 ended up being a massive customer yeah everyone else around me was either packed down or got their stuff or had their backs to everyone you've paid to be there till five o'clock i don't understand why you would um break down before five o'clock or even think about breaking down till five o'clock right there we go that's um that's me have fun guys they're, they're fantastic I, I i have so much fun at trade shows meeting people chatting about the product it, it's the most awesome experience uh for you know uh, trade shows but anyway thank you very much amazing thank you so much marcus and i think we had um a picture of marcus's contact details on there so um do get in touch if you want any more information from him but we'll make the slides available as well but um you know i know marcus speaks from true experience so really really valuable tips and tricks there so thank you very much um and now we pass over to um adrian over to you adrian hello well thank you nicola good morning everybody uh, i hope everybody is well um apologies I, I haven't got any slides so you're stuck with my face for like was it 15 20 minutes or something like that so apologies for that um but i believe i'm here to speak to you about how to approach buyers and i think there's um it's a very tricky question. There's no one size fits all approach, unfortunately. Um, but I'd probably start by saying, uh, we're talking from a perspective of the different types of buyers, because uh, ultimately we're just people. And we have different characteristics and different personalities. Um, we have different targets, different KPIs, um, and you guys don't know what that is when we attend the show. So you, you have the first type of buyer who, um, is in a category review and is looking for something very specific. Um, so they're quite tunnel visioned in their way, um, in the way they approach the show, in the way they approach the stand, in what they're looking for. So that's the first. The second type is um, probably the category that I fall into, um, which is uh, I just sort of like to go and be surprised and freestyle. I'm not looking for anything in, in particular, um, but I am looking for something that's going to wow me and something that's going to amaze me. So like I said at the top, it, it's very difficult for you guys to understand um, which of those categories we're falling into. So first part is a disclaimer. Everything that I say is, is from personal experience and from any experience or any conversations that I've had with any other buyers along the way um, in regards to trade shows and some of the things that they look for. The first thing um, 
that I think should really be considered is, and I think Mark has touched upon it earlier, is, you know, we are ultimately there to see product and good product. And the product's got to be the star of the show in some shape or form. So I know I was just watching Marcus's presentation and there was a couple of slides where they've gone bigger on branding rather than the actual product. And again, this isn't a one size fits all and it's not for me to tell you what to do. You've spent your money, it's your product, it's your brand. And I recognize that and I respect that. But ultimately, um, the product has got to be the star of the show. So how can you incorporate that into your stand? How can you ensure that, you know, the first thing because obviously you know, you've worked very hard to get this product to market and to get it to the trade show. So how can you ensure um, that the product does do you justice and actually it gets the right amount of attention that you want it to? And it's, it's, it's got to be the start of the show. So that's that's most definitely the first thing. I think the second thing is again you you're not you you can't hundred percent be sure unless you can see clearly what's on the name badge, who these people are, and where they're from. So how do you actually approach someone physically? I mean, again, it's um, a very tricky one because you're dealing ultimately with, with people and different personalities. So, you know, some people will want you to be completely up in their face and how are you, bags of energy, happy, smiling. Some people will just want to browse the stand before they even um, even have any part of communication with anybody. So from your perspective, it is going to be a lot of, uh, unfortunately, you know, trying to read customers as they walk up. There is that balance. Um, again, I know what, what Marcus sort of alluded to. There is that balance of actually, well, because you don't know who is this person, how can you sort of get in and get, get in quickly to understand whether this person is just, you know, someone who's just a foodie, not really trying to buy or purchase and, you know, couldn't help to, to push you forward from a retail wholesale perspective and, or is it actually someone who's generally interested in your product and represents a company who's, who's looking at thinking about bringing it in and can generate some 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 volume? That is a very tricky one, but unfortunately, it does come down to a bit of uh, people watching, reading, looking at their body movements, um, how engaged with doing the product. It's it's little things. Um, people in the food industry, one of the first things they'll do when they get to your product, they'll pick it up. They'll probably turn it around to have a look at the ingredients, to have a look at the labeling, to see if everything's in place where it needs to be, because these are the sort of things that we're looking for. Like how much more work do I need to put in to this product? If I if, if I pick it up and I like the front, sounds like a good concept, it's more than likely we'll look at the back to say, actually, is this going to be a lot of technical work for us to get through? So, I mean, those that's one telltale sign that this person possibly knows what, I mean, again, it could just be someone who's looking for allergen information because they might have a dietary requirement. But again, it is definitely a telltale sign from a lot of people within the industry. But ultimately, ultimately, it really comes down to people. Um, I say this a lot. I, uh, I think I did it at the last speciality event I did with Bread and Jam. And I, I always speak about the people um, because regardless of how good your product is, if the people are not engaging, um, and if the people do, do not have the knowledge and the passion of the product, and if the people do not know how to articulate that, clearly, um, in what I would say is, is, is a short amount of time, um, then ultimately that's really weird where it's not going to work out for you. So in regards to who's man in the store, whether or not you're hiring staff from an agency, uh, whether you guys are doing it for yourselves, um, whatever that looks like, you know, just make sure that they're well-versed on the product, they're well-versed on the brand. They can speak about it effortlessly, confidently, and um, they can answer any questions, but also if they don't have the answers to the questions, they have, you know, a good enough response to that, which doesn't mean that we, you know, we, we sort of walk away coming away thinking this person didn't really know what they were talking about, um, you know, because it is, it is all about first impressions, unfortunately. Um, so that's the major thing. Um, it's, it's, I mean, on the flip side, Again, you know, Marcus was talking about sort of taking orders and these types of things. Um, Buyer, from my perspective, I wouldn't really be looking for placing any orders. It literally is really around, um, it really is about trying to understand the brand, trying to understand the product. Um, we'll be thinking about how it could fit in when we take it back to the office. Um, but it's ultimately about putting your brand at the forefront of our minds in a short space of time 
Um, and ultimately as well, you have to remember it, it is a competitive market and as friendly as we are as foodies, um, very passionate bunch of people we are. Um, ultimately, what you are really trying to achieve is to grab 60 seconds of my time over the stand next to you or 60 seconds of my time versus the stand at the end because we only do have a limited amount of time. It's very rare that you'll have a buyer that will attend the show all day. Most of the buyers that I speak with, myself included, three hours maximum, right? we're at the show. Um, and usually, you know, we're, we're, it's a half day, so we've been in the office or we're going back to the office, one way or the other. So there's always lots of things for you guys to consider. How else can you approach buyers? Um, I think it's always wise to have an understanding of the types of questions that you should be asking. Um, this isn't a one-way street. This is a, if you do get the opportunity to meet with a buyer who is interested and you do have the opportunity to potentially work with them, do remember that it's, the old days are gone of this, where the buyers, uh, you do this, you do everything, you jump for every hoop that, 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 that we're throwing at you. Um, it's, you know, the, the balance of power is shifting slightly because there is so much opportunity, so much more opportunity for brands to do things for themselves and have direct relationships with customers. So always remember that, you know, the types of questions you ask buyers um, are very important because you need to have an understanding whether or not that, that, that brand is a right fit for you. So it could be simple questions as, so what sort of margins are you looking for? Um, where do deliveries need to, you know, where, where do we need to send our deliveries to? These are the types of things that you need to know so you can understand whether or not actually you you can even, you know, can you support the logistical format? You know, RDC is in Birmingham. Do you have a logistic supply chain? You might need that information. You know, if I tell you that our margin is 50%, do your cost prices versus the cost prices that you was planning to tell me versus the RRPs that uh, you always, uh, friends, and sorry, this is a bit of a surgery. Please, the RRPs, it, we pay no attention to them because we have margin requirements. So um, let's always start with how much it's going to cost us, not how much you'd, you expect us to retail it for. But, you know, you would need that. You would need to understand, okay, if this is the margin um, that they need and potentially they, you know, they're talking about this is how much we think we could sell it by, actually, can you actually deliver it to us at that price and still make some money or are you going to be making a loss? So it's all about information gathering from your perspective as well. So... I think of it as a two-way a two-way street and i think you should too there is the selling element which ultimately you are to do but it's also about awareness raising awareness of your brand which is key there's so many brands that we've seen at the show that we've seen in the september never we haven't reached out to them in april because we thought we like this product we like this range but we'll come back around for that one when, when we know we're going to need it so there is again it's that balance of you know chasing up after the show, but also as well, um, having a little bit of patience as well, just to understand. Um, and that loops back down to that knowledge piece as well. Do you have enough knowledge about your brand and do you have enough knowledge about your um, your product offer to understand, you know, is it, what season are you in um, and how seasonal is your product and is it relevant for, you know, the push that you're making? If Again, I always come back to it, you know, the show's in September, um, if you're looking to, to sell me a Christmas product in September, it's not really going to happen. So now you should be asking questions and thinking about, you know, when do you start looking at Christmas for next year? Because we've got this great gift in range and these types of things. So it's how about you? How, how do you approach building relationships versus just trying to come from a selling perspective? Because that's another part of it as well. So, I mean, I think those are really the key things that that I would um, that I would I would put in front of you guys and you know this is not just some of my comments but these are comments from some of the other guys in the team um, and like i said some other buyers that i've i've spoken to who have attended the show over the years um and i i hope i hope they have been useful to you um yeah i don't know if there's any questions Do we have one question there? Do you, Adrian, do you look for specific sustainability info? And are you interested to discuss white labeling at the show? White labeling, yes, most definitely. Um, yes, we are we are looking, we will, we will be able to discuss that. Um, sustainability, everyone's going to be discussing sustainability 
at this show and for the next well for, for, for definitely for sure for the next decade um it's it's a massive part of what we do but there's no specific there's no specific way to approach sustainability you have to figure out what sustainability means for your brand and your product and how that works fab i don't think there are any more questions um thank you adrian always always amazing to hear from you and we thank you for your valuable time and input um and we look forward to seeing you um at speciality roaming the floors no worries thank you very much okay now we pass over to um ben who is um looking after uh, city harvest who are one of our charity partners so um over to you ben Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ben. I work for City Harvest London. Uh, we're a food redistribution charity uh, based in Acton, West London. Um, I've just got one page, um, which we could pull up, please. Um, so it's not very long, my talk. Um, but we've been we were set up in 2014 uh, to rescue food from across the supply chain, um, from production and farm level uh, to uh, retailers as well. Um, we also work with restaurants uh, such as Nando's, um, but as as part of our as part of our mission, we work with uh, events companies and caterers as well, uh, which is where we enter the fray for the speciality and fine food fair. Already this year, we've um, worked at IFE and the Allergen and Free From show, um, rescuing pallets and pallets and pallets of food uh, left over from the event. Um, so our purpose at the event is not only to build uh, long-term uh, contacts and to rescue uh, regular um, amounts of surplus uh, from across the supply chain, but it's also to make the event as, as zero waste as possible. Um, so. At these events, you'll likely see myself and, and a number of other colleagues um, supported by uh, some of our drivers, um, people from our finance team, volunteers as well, um, who can give you a concrete background on City Harvest, what we do and our operations. Um, so we work with over 350 charity partners across London, with many of our beneficiaries being homeless, families, children. Um, so we work uh, with them on a daily basis, rescuing um, over 100 tonnes consistently for the past, uh, uh, sorry, 100 tonnes per week um, across this year. Um, so that equates to well over 10 tonnes uh, going out to our charity partners each day. Um, we accept a range of fresh, frozen, ambient and chilled items, everything from small blemishes on fruit uh, to packaging errors, over-ordering, new product developments, um, as long as it adheres to our uh, food safety guidelines and its original packaging used by best before allergens and ingre ingredients, um, we'll absolutely take that. Um, so we also collect from across the country, um, but all our charity partners are based currently in London. Um, as I said, we'll be going across across the um, festival. We'll be going stall to stall, um, so we'll 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 be there. Um, please do let us know if you can in advance whether you think you'll uh, like to build a a relationship. We can get 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 it kicked off now. Um, but ultimately, um, when it comes to the fair day, we'll be there to clear up any surplus that there is. Um, and yeah. Um, Please just do if you have any questions. Um, I think there is the food team email across the bottom. I can't quite see it, um, but please do reach out to us in advance. Always happy to answer questions you have uh, ahead of the show or um, on, before before the day. Um, that's it for me, I think. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, and we will have um, on site at the show um, at the end of the event two collection points. So um, if you do have any surplus food um, that you don't want to take back with you um, from the show, um, there'll be two points which will um, notify you about, about closer to the time. Um, and you can drop food there, which um, then the City Harvest team will take away. Um, great. Thank you very much, Ben.
Um, and thank you, everyone. Thank you for um, all of you that tuned in today. Um, thank you to all of our guests and speakers for such valuable insights. It's always such, um, wonderful hearing from you all and getting such amazing hints and tips um, to make us um, you know, exhibit better. Um, a couple of things for me before we close, just a reminder to please take a look at our speciality and fine food fair awards um, and nominate where you can. Um, it's a really exciting thing to do um, and to nominate sort of peers and your products um, where you can. Um, Virgin Pitch Live is such a brilliant opportunity. So please do take a look at that and the application form will be online today. Um, sponsorship, if you are interested in additional branding opportunities, then please do get in contact. We've got some really lovely options available. Um, yeah, so please do contact the team. Um, and finally, um, a huge good luck with your preparations. Um, remember, the team are here to help you. So if you get stuck at any point, please do reach out to us. We're, we're here to help. Um, and we just really look forward to welcome you to the show in September. Um, but for now, that's everything from us and we'll see you soon. Take care.